I'm Natalie. I'm Mike. And we're back at you with another episode of our playthrough of God of War. Just a couple announcements before we get started. We are going to switch things up a little bit in terms of how we address some comments. Namely, I'm going to be doing like a separate either YouTube short or a separate episode where I just strictly address the questions because there's a lot of them and there are a lot of really excellent ones. They're all excellent. And I want to be able to, to do that without taking up, you know, the gameplay time. The next couple of weeks are kind of hectic for me as I have got some conferences and lectures going on, but um, we'll do our best to continue to record and post content. Um, I also have our move back to North America coming up. Um, but the good news about that is Mike and I will physically be in the same place for a little while and we can maybe try to do some kind of a, a live stream or something like that. So, all right, we're running up to Brenna Davy. Yeah, second troll we encounter here. He's on fire, which makes sense. His name literally means burning death. Ooh. Going into my Spartan rage. <laughs> um, yes, we left off. We had uh, just met Brock. Um, yep. Kind of going through some uh, different areas as we progress through the story. So I got another rune here. Uh, nice. Divaldi's oh, Evaldi. Okay. Yeah, he's... he was a, a dwarf, right? Yeah, he was. He is known for making the ship Skidvlagnir that belongs to the god Freyr. And that was one of the questions that I will oh. get to is about Freyr when I go through the comments in a little special Q&A. Yeah, so again, it's just, uh, he's he kind of alludes to how isolated they were prior to uh, Faye dying and sure. uh, them taking down the, the trees. They kind of just mm -hmm. hung out in the house before then? Okay. I guess. I'm not really sure. I don't know the backstory here, but okay. uh, they were yeah, so here are the other ones. Human Reavers, but now that they've, they've embodied Sather. So that's uh, Odin practice Sather. It's a form of um, prophetic magic. And he is said to learn it from Freya and the Vanir. These are normally these, these things here. Uh, I can't remember what it says, but. Um, okay. um, yeah, I can't read it. Boy. Atreus will read it. Huh. Of course he will, yeah. I may want to write that down. And he just somehow just knows all this stuff. And that's <laughs> right? Like. Yeah. Some of the lore markers, I can't okay. remember. Oh, it's a prayer to Odin. Prayer here. to Odin or sacrifice mighty all father. Okay. So deliver us from hell's wild hunt. Hell's wild hunt. Interesting. Okay. Hell is, of course, the realm of the dead. He gave breath to Osk and Embla, the first humans. Send forth the noble Valkyries and called the Deathless. Send forth your noble sons, Thor and Baldur, to shield us and send forth dragons. Okay. Yeah, Valkyries are the female host kind of associated with Odin, and they ride over the battlefields and pick the chosen slain who are going to come up to Valhalla, Odin's Hall, the Hall of the Slain. So one question I wanted to ask was uh, about just mythology in general and, and maybe some common themes, because you've got Baldur, mm -hmm. whose mother place those enchantments on him so he can only be harmed by mistletoe mm -hmm. it seems to kind of correlate to like the mythology around like achilles whose mother of course also wanted him mm -hmm. not to be harmed dipped him in the river sticks they're much different characters in their respective mythologies because achilles is a fantastic warrior and balder's kind of useless right in the myth mm -hmm. Apart yeah from... i mean he doesn't really he just doesn't do much like outside from getting killed and causing I think being the catalyst for Ragnarok. Yeah. No, but that's a really good point. Like I don't I'm sure things have been written about it and sort of comparative mythologies and sort of like archetypes that are that you find across across different mythologies. So that's yeah. but they do I mean that's absolutely like when I explain Baldur and I explain um to my classes and I talk about, you know, how he is invincible except for by you know by mistletoe mm -hmm. the achilles comparison is one i draw uh, uh, yeah makes so sense I'm sure some scholars out there have written about it and sort of yeah comparative mythologies and that sort of thing i just it's really comparable so uh again after we left brock we were pursuing a boar mm. uh, so we're back here 
All right. I can think Getting of a couple. Uh, and, and somebody alluded to this. Somebody told me already in the comments, but I was before this, we were, I was thinking this, there's some, fig, there's at least one figure, one figure for sure. Um, but a, another one as well that I would associate a boar with. Oh, they're going to hunt it. And if it's the boar that, yeah, it's the boar that we were told it was, that's going to be trouble. Yep, it just bounced off its hide. I do what you said, and it looked like it. And what do you think? It looked weirder than any boar I've ever seen. Get after it then. He's being nicer to Atreus, like actually interacting with him, mentoring him. Yeah, it's good development in his character where he goes yeah. from being very cold to forming the bond with him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, there's the old boar out on the trail. Yeah, I had suspicions when we first saw this. And ran in the rump. Ooh, it's stuck this time. What did you do? <gasps> Someone's upset. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you had a... You needed food? A hint with the boar. What's the significance of the boar then? It's um the boar that's associated with Freya. Um, its name is Hillisvin, which means battle swine, and it's her boar. I kind of had an, an, an inkling that this might have been Freya's boar, and then that was confirmed in one of the comments. So thanks for that. For um, that was useful information and kind of giving me a sense of what was to come. Oh, obviously, I know that this is Unam from the south, Boca, Fog. So, Seder magic more like connected to nature? Connected to nature, it's connected to women. And it's like, um, yeah. it's sort of shamanic. It's connected to nature, it's connected to animals and the dead. Um, maybe more like uh, Druidism or. Yeah, maybe. I don't, yeah. It's. Something you know, like a lot of it crossing over into a, a you know, different realm in order to, you know, engage in, like, prophecy and things like that. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, and like I said, it was associated with um, Freya and the Vanir. That's something that the Vanir were known for. And she taught it to Odin. Like, Loki actually insulted Odin for using satyr magic associated with women. Oh, okay. And that was always a big insult in Old Norse. Um, sure. Yeah. Texts to call, call a man anything other than anything less than a man. Emily is home. That's just kind of cool. Yeah. It's a giant tortoise here. I don't know if there's Ooh. any connection or anything in the mythology about that or if it's just some creative license but uh, i don't know actually not i can't think of anything off the top of my head but i'm gonna look into it this is kind of cool here again uh you get some more hints at uh, who atreus yeah. is okay he's uh talking to him okay so he's has the ability to... can under he has that understanding okay so he the understands animals. the animals Freya's associated with the boar. She's associated with cats, um, a chariot drawn by cats. She's associated with falcons because she takes a falcon shape. But oh. tortoises. I'll have to look into that. Keep him still. So it's Hildesvin is the boar, yeah. meaning battle swine. And that has to do with like Freya as sort of being a goddess of war in addition to being a goddess of other things. I said in the reaction oh. video that Freya's a Valkyrie, not completely correct. I mean, she technically is like a Valkyrie prototype. Like oh. she does what all the Valkyries also do, um, but she's not, can't be really a Valkyrie because she's a goddess. Um, so okay. she rides the chariot drawn by cats over the battlefield and the Valkyries also ride over the battlefield and she chooses half of the slain to take to her hall in Folkvanger and the Valkyries take the other half to um, to Odin's hall at Valhalla. Ah, interesting. So Val Valkyria um, literally means chooser of the slain. So this is interesting here. She 
identifies Kratos as being a god of a different realm. Okay, so she knows. She she knows. She identifies. Yep. The boy will want answers. Okay. That yeah. Be my problem. Whatever you're hiding, you cannot protect him forever. Does she recognize him? No, she does not recognize Atreus. Um, if that's who you're referring to. Yeah. Do you mind? Um, it's a white petal flower in my garden. Just a handful. No. Fine. Lambs, Chris. So I think, and I'm, someone can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I think this is a window to Vanaheim, which mm -hmm. would be Freya's home realm, right? In the, yeah, in the nine yeah. realms. Vanaheim was like, Hamer means world. And okay. Vana is like of the Vanir. The Vanir being kind of the other main tribe of gods. And Freya, her twin brother Freyr, their dad, Njörður, are all of the Vanir. And sometimes like some sources tell us that Heimdall was of the Vanir. Um, oh. But it's not, I mean, the sources aren't consistent. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like, like they were all produced uniformly or something like that. So they often reflect variations. So she has this connection to the natural world. And I mean, Sather is often translated as a kind of witchcraft in the um, into English in a lot of the translations of the mythological literature. Like, oh, Odin engages in witchcraft, right? Like that's what some of mm -hmm. the sources will translate it as when it's a source that talks about Odin doing Sather magic. Chasing the animal. Careless Atreus. You did lose it. There's a lot in her little sanctuary grove here. Um, mm. A lot of really cool mythological references and awesome. things like that that we'll get to next time I'm here. Oh, yeah. Not without thanks. You want solitude? Lena. Lena means to conceal. Mm. Yeah, I think she's uh, applying this to them that it should help hide them from uh, yeah. the Lena. Aesir. It's a verb that means to conceal. Hey, Emily's home. Yeah, so the tortoise is the the coming back down. Okay. head towards daylight okay. there's a lot in here in the cave too that i think we get to later on um older creature called a mare that sits on your chest while you sleep and feeds off your fear sounds folkloric yeah seems like dreams are always a big part of uh, folklore and yeah and dreams are a huge part of like old norse like worldview they're a big part of the mythology too. Dreams were mm -hmm. thought to be messengers of fate. It's actually Baldur's, mm -hmm. he, Baldur's bad dreams that he's having about his impending death that get everybody really concerned because that has carries a lot of meaning. A dream is something that happens to you. It's a way in which a message such as fate is conveyed. So they're always taken really seriously. I like how, kind of how understated he is. And in a way like that is really in line with stuff that you see in old Norse literature. And it's like kind of this like almost humorous understatement. Like somebody mm -hmm. will be like dealt a fatal wound and they'll just look down at it and they'll be like struck there. Like that's a really common one, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, or they'll pull an arrow out of their gut and look at the arrow and be like, we've eaten well during our time here or something like that. <laughs> like they just, these like laconic utterances at like the point of their, of their demise. Um, <laughs> your arms to the center of the water mm. Make it again the cradle of the world okay so another riddle what? yeah more weapons into the water guess that won't be a problem for you what are you gonna do it oh I know who that is also saw this one in the clip Mm-hmm. Okay. This one's pretty cool. So I want to explain myself. <laughs> in, in the gameology video, 
I mentioned that what we're about to see is a lot bigger than I had thought it would be. And the reason why is, like, I realize that the Midgard Serpent encircles the whole world, you haven't gotten there. Um, however, Thor goes fishing for it and uses as bait, like an ox head. So, and also on like the runic depictions and like picture stones, he's not much bigger than Thor. Um, and I realize mm. that there's probably a lot of reasons for that. Like, and so that's kind of what I always have in mind are those like really iconic picture stones of Jormungandr. Like I realize that it's supposed to circle the whole world. Um, but when I think about Thor going fishing for the Midgard Serpent, using an ox's head for bait, and thinking about like that, I just don't think that would be, you know, effective. But you never know. Just as you can see, he's huge in this game, uh, yeah. at least. And of course, and, I mean, um, that makes sense. I mean, there's no consistency in anything in, the, in mythology either, so. Yeah. And he I... speaks as well, which is kind of cool. And um, Ooh. eventually we are able to talk to him. We couldn't understand him, I guess maybe because it's just too loud. Uh, and I was but talking. Wasn't... <laughs> well, he wasn't able to. I, Kratos asked him, what is he saying? And, and he didn't know. Okay. Uh, he wasn't able to understand. I'm trying to pause for the dialogue. It's just really hard because I have a lot of things I want to say. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. An exaggeration. I don't know. Looks pretty big to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he said he's tried speaking to us, but I couldn't understand him. I wonder if that's the language all the giants speak. Mm, yeah. He seemed I very mean, interested. He is a giant. Um, he is a, yep, uh, a yepin the giant because his dad is a giant and your like mythological race is goes down the paternal line he and thor are like mortal enemies so we upgraded some stuff with brock now we're continuing on the path uh to go up the mountain with what we think is the highest mountain in the realms whoa Yeah, so both of them he's unable to read. I'm not sure if it's just the different different runes or, or what. Well, I don't I think we'd another Jotnar shrine. Okay. Look, it's the world serpent. Hmm. It's so much bigger than I imagined. Wolves, world serpent feeding. Oh, look, keep with a bunch of Fenrirs. Or will by them. Is that Thor? Oh no, that's in the last panel. Sorry, he bit Thor. Not the first yeah, one. I was like, well, I don't think that's Thor. No, the last panel, I mean, at the end of the world, they're gonna face off. Yeah. But Thor's always like he fishes for the Midgard serpent, tries to catch and almost like narrowly succeeds in catching catching him. So it looked like maybe the nine realms here. The wolves are howling. Is that meant to be growing? Yemen Anders mother, Angerboda? Ah, could be the ogress whose li name literally means sorrow bringer because she's and gonna bring about bad things for everybody through her <laughs> offspring and so there you bit thor and all that's right. that that's the shrine on uh, jormungandr all right so we're through the next area uh, and we're gonna get to the foot of the mountain and meet uh, another person the mountain well, person the mountain yeah the mountain in midgard like the mountain that they're, that they're trying to go up, right? Yep, the mountain that they're trying to get to the top of. Okay. How did you come by that uh, axe? That is my concern alone. And uh, while I won't dispute that, I, I know that blade. It was one of ours, but... Uh, <laughs> mm, Sindri. Didn't make it for you. Step aside. I can't. See the woman we made it for? I was, uh, well, I am quite fond of her. I would be somewhat displeased if it turns out that you did something to her. It was my mother's. So they made the axe for Faye. I see. Uh, Brock and Sindri, of course, or Etri, yeah. the bros. I'm very, very so they don't get along anymore. Yeah, they look completely uh, different and yeah. do not have the same accents. They get into, I think, the reason why they split up no okay. later. I swear to Freya, there, that handle is no. filthy. Maybe a little bit of a germaphobe. 
I think so. But then again, there's blood all over the, just the, the <laughs> handle. <laughs> Who even knows what? Oh, is that dried blood? Oh. <laughs> so what were you working on? Oh, that. I call it the sky mover. Just up that mountain waits a treasure trove of rare resources. Once I mine it, we'll need a way to bring it all down. And you know how to fix it? Not even a little. Yeah, is Interesting that a, statue here. Is that the Brenna Deity, the burning death troll? Uh, that's a good question. It, it does look like, like it. a troll, though. Well, it looks like, um, kind of looked like the thing that he was, that it was, you know, flailing around that was on fire. Yeah, so that's yeah. as far as I made it. But awesome. uh, we'll continue on the journey to go Forge up. Forge ahead. Yeah. yeah, that we will. This was a good one. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed meeting Freya and... Yeah. Um, yeah and getting to see Sindri as well so this was yeah. this was great thanks so much for the gameplay and yeah we'll be back when we when we're able to it's you know we haven't really settled into any kind of uh routine of of anything we'll do them when we have time and um that will hopefully be soon for the next one and I will definitely be making um either a YouTube short or or a video with just me where I answer the questions then I will address them all and do that all in kind of one video separate from the gameplay which was a suggestion that was really good to keep those things separate so you don't have to if you're not interested in those things you don't have to sit through all of that while you're waiting for the gameplay but yeah thank you for yeah watching yeah, thanks everyone we appreciate all the support and I think Natalie's yeah. latest gameology video just dropped too on on Hellblade so yeah so indeed check that out too yeah that's, that's I really love cool. that one um, like I bought that, I actually bought that game. So I think after Tears of the Kingdom, well, who knows how long that'll take me. So I'll probably be with that <laughs> one for quite a while, but at some point, and maybe that can even be the next uh, game that we, that we do is Hellblade. It seems, um, seems really cool. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I really enjoyed looking at that one and seeing how it was playing around with, with, um, Norse mythology and, um, and Celtic, um, mythology and, and folklore, um, as well. So yeah, it's a great idea. Well, thanks, yeah. everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.